Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So today we're going to talk about, um, again, Prince Andrew, uh, but uh, specifically with uh, his involvement uh, with this uh, young underage uh, woman. So that'll be the question today. Prince Andrew um, and this underage woman. Okay, so I got a little information specific to this uh, issue that we're going to talk about. So I'll just go through it very quickly. It's very short. and It'll give you some um, information that uh, might make uh, your decision about this even better. So. The BBC News reports that Andrew's friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, an American financier and convicted sex offender, and Virginia Roberts Giffrey is producing a steady stream of criticism. In 2001, Virginia Roberts Giffrey, uh, on a trip to London when she was 17, she was just Virginia Roberts at that time, and later in New York, and again on Little St. James, again she was supposedly still underage at that time, a small private uh, island in the United States, so Little St. James is a small private island in the United States Virgin Islands, alleged that Epstein paid her $15,000 to have sex with Prince Andrew. and flight logs show Andrew and Virginia were in the places she alleges the sex occurred. Now, in an interview, Andrew denied having sex with Virginia Roberts Giffrey in 2001 because he had been at home, he says, with his daughters after attending a party at Pizza Express in Woking, a town in northwest Surrey, uh, England. Now, in 2008, an affidavit from Virginia accuses, uh, accused rather the U.S. Justice Department of violating the Crime Victims' Rights Act act during Epstein's uh, first criminal case by not allowing several of his victims to challenge his plea deal. Andrew was otherwise not a party to the lawsuit. So 2010, Prince Andrew had been photographed strolling with Epstein in Central Park, uh, New York City. And also 2010, Andrew admitted to staying at Epstein's mansion for three days after Epstein's conviction for sex offenses against a minor, uh, describing the location as a convenient place to stay. Andrew said that he met Epstein for the sole purpose of breaking off any future relationship with him. But 2010, or 2011 rather, with calls for him to step down from his role as trade envoy, that's uh, Prince Andrew, um, Andrew was criticized in the media after Sarah Ferguson disclosed that he helped arrange for Epstein to pay off 15,000 pounds of her debts. And in 2011, also, Andrew's role as trade envoy was terminated, and he reportedly cut all ties with Epstein. Now, go to 2014, and a Florida court alleged Andrew and lawyer Alan Dershowitz and others have participated in sexual activities with Virginia Roberts Giffrey, who was allegedly trafficked for sex by Epstein. And then in 2015, there was renewed media and public pressure for Buckingham Palace to explain Andrew's connection with Epstein. Buckingham Palace stated that any suggestion of impropriety uh, with underage minors is categorically untrue, and the allegations had not been tested in any court. Now, requests from uh, Virginia Roberts Giffrey's lawyers for a statement from Andrew under oath were, under oath rather, were returned unanswered. So he's not participating, you know, in um, in clearing it up. Apparently, let's see what the cards say. Okay, so I got these great cards, and if you ever doubted that I'm a sucker for a great packaging of cards, then this will confirm it. So these cards are by famed artist Salvador Dali. He includes himself in uh, the cards and his wife, and they also include uh, examples of some of his artwork and other uh, artists uh, that, that he felt were appropriate for the, for the interpretation. Uh, these cards were created... Uh, or were um, commissioned in 1973 for the uh, film uh, Live and Let Die. However, uh, Dolly's um, uh, price was, I guess, too much. So contract uh, negotiations broke down. And then finally, 10 years later, by 1984, Dolly completed the tarot deck, 78 cards, and had them published for the first time, limited edition. And now Toshin has re- um, uh, printed these cards in this amazing uh, box. So when I ordered them, I thought I'd get a box you know, about this big. And when this thing came in the mail, I was totally shocked. They're not cheap. They're quite expensive. But anyway, so this is an amazing cover. This box is like a, a crushed velvet uh, kind of finish here. And it's just everything, everything, everything that gets me going about tarot card uh, containers, if you can't tell from my excitement. So, and then there's lots on the back here. It's in three different languages. It's in uh, Spanish, in German, and in English. And then the way this thing opens up, it's just like this. 
And once you get inside, you've got this amazing booklet uh, to describe uh, how uh, something about the cards and how to use them. The booklet is a full color, and then each page has three interpretations of the card. When I say interpretations, I mean that's English, uh, German, and Spanish. So um, lovely, lovely book, amazing. I mean, the price of the cards was, was the, the price that I paid for this was worth it if I only got this book. The one uh, problem I have with it, however, is that it's beautiful, but the first part of this uh, book is uh, a lot that talks about uh, Dali and how the cards came to be. And as you can see, it's on this dark purple with this gold printing, and I can barely, barely make it out. I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass eventually to read it, but uh, not today. And uh, so I've had these for a few days, and I've been uh, practicing with them. I haven't tried to decipher this yet. It's just too dark, and I've got uh, vision problems that make it just even more complicated. But when you finally get to where they're talking about the cards themselves, it's fantastic because you've got a white background, easy to read. It's a little small, but still it's easy to read because they've, they've gotten everything on one page. And uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, I'm so glad I got this. It was on a whim. Now the cards, look at how they're displayed. The cards themselves come in this really cool gold foil kind of, it's a typical box for tarot cards, but just the design is terrific. And then the cards themselves, I'll take them out here, put the box back, and well, I'll keep this out. And then I'll put this away. But I'll show you the cards quickly um, before we go any further. And I guess I'll have to leave this here so we have something to, to, to look at. And then uh, here, when you get into the inner sanctum, there's no more uh, instructions inside here. It's just this cool uh, foiled uh, box. And then the cards themselves are terrific. The back is a really beautiful uh, foil looking design. It's not foil, but it's a gold design. And this just simply says Dolly over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. That's the back of the cards. The cards themselves are amazing. So like I say, they have included some of uh, uh, snippets of Dolly's work and some other artists. And if I was more studious, I would have really studied that and have something to tell you uh, more concrete. But um, they're just absolutely beautiful. On The Magician, you can see uh, Salvador Dali is the face of the magician. If I find it quickly, I'll show it to you. And on The uh, Empress, that's his wife, uh, Gala, but, uh, which I don't see right away. But um, they're terrific cards. I can't wait to use them. And so... There's where we're at. You know, I, I make these uh, this mess of the cards like this uh, so that uh, you can get a chance to see different cards more completely than just the few uh, cards that a, a, a reader might pull up in the, in a reading and, um, and enjoy that. And then, like I always say, if you're working with someone, I always think it's a good idea to have them spread the cards out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. And then, you know, um, that they've got a, a stake in the in the reading. So Salvador Dali, amazing, worth every penny I paid for these. Okay, so poor Prince Andrew he keeps getting in all kinds of fixes. And um, I know I just did a reading on him a couple days ago, but I thought let's go ahead and, and see if we can specifically speak to this. You know, one of these cards looks like it's upside down, and you know, that's just the bane of my existence upside down cards, but I get stuck. So, uh, what we'll do is we will just do a quick full Celtic cross to ask, okay, were you with this woman and are you lying? That's it. I mean, simple, plain and simple. Were you with this underage girl, and are you lying? So, we'll do six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Were you with this underage girl, and are you lying about it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the signifier card for that is going to be the King of Cups. So, the King of Cups speaks to us of... Um, uh, compassion. This is a fellow who's in total control of his emotions, uh, compassion. He would be a compassionate king. And uh, so that's who we're looking at here. So this is identifying uh, Prince Andrew as the compassionate king. Is it possible that he didn't know she was underage? So the challenge to that uh, would be, let's see, how many cups is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of cups. Nine of cups is wishes fulfilled. So if the challenge to him being uh, the compassionate king is wishes being fulfilled, um, I'm not sure how that reads into it. So let's leave it there for just a minute and we'll come right back to it. Wishes fulfilled, the greedy merchant. Ah, so uh, this could mean uh, that his, his um, yeah, 
his baser instincts maybe uh, got the better of him wanting to be this compassionate uh, person. Interesting. So the, the base of this reading then is going to be the one, two, three, four, four, six, seven, eight of, yep, the eight of, of wands. Eight of wands is, are things coming at you really fast and furious. And if you can see way down in the detail of this, you see two folks here, two men actually fighting it out. And it's interesting that this particular card also uh, depicts a, a book. Whenever I see a book or, or writing like this in these cards, for me, that's that's knowledge. So I'm going to say that there's a lot of information that's coming forward really fast. To um, and that was the base of the situation with uh, with uh, the prince. In the past of this reading, though, we've got the tower. Okay, that's the tower moment. That's everything falling apart. And it looks to me like this is saying, yeah, you did this. Maybe you had an inkling and that was your downfall. And then in the sky of this reading, we're going to have the chariot. And the chariot is uh, the best that you can hope for. And the chariot means that things are coming at you fast and furious. I mean, things are moving along and there's really not going to be uh, much that you can do to stop it. I don't know where I want to put this one because I want it to be obvious that it's the chariot. We'll look at it in Spanish. I don't know, Carl. Okay. So that's where we're at, and this isn't looking good so far, but the likely outcome for this first part of this Celtic cross is going to be the fool, and it's a new journey. So, uh, uh, you know, starting a new cycle, starting a new journey um, could mean that this is where he starts to have to um, pay for this indiscretion. But let's see what the last uh, four cards say. So I'm going to say, regarding this situation, uh, was there a time when he realized this was an underage woman and he went through with it? I mean, three times supposedly had, had sex with this woman. So the signifier for that card, for that uh, situation, is going to be the lovers. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, he did. He was with her. Okay, I mean, that's clear enough. Um, wow. And then the, um, the environment that that's in is going to be, oh, what is this? Is this nightmares? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, the nine of swords is just nightmares, unrest, and things um, uh, just really keeping you disturbed and awake. So yeah, it looks like that's the environment that this is in. I mean, this couldn't be clearer. The uh, hopes and the fears for this situation for him Ah, yeah, this is the hope. One, two, three, four, five, six. The six of swords is always means moving on, moving out of troubled water. And I don't know if you can make it out, but this is a little skiff, a little boat, uh, actually, uh, certainly uh, moving forward. And uh, six of swords moving out of troubled water. So that would be his hope, is that he can somehow move past this. And then the likely outcome of this whole thing for poor Prince Andrew is uh, one, two, three, four, five of pentacles. And the five of pentacles is being left out in the cold. So it looks like at some point... He's not going to be able to be protected anymore. So I would say that things don't look great uh, right now for Prince Andrew regarding, Andrew regarding this question. You know, these guys, what are they thinking or not thinking? So the beginning of this read in the first, uh, the first part, the first six cards, we saw the Prince Andrew being as portrayed as the compassionate king, you know, full of emotion, compassion, uh, you know, not a bad guy. But then the challenge to that was, of course, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, was this nine of cups, which is wishes fulfilled. And if his wishes were to have a, um, an exciting few times with this woman, then that's what was the challenge to him being the compassionate king. In the base of the reading was the eight of swords, which is everything coming on, you know, lots of issues to deal with, uh, motion, power, movement. That's what the eight of swords is. And in the past of this was the tower. So it looks like he had a tower moment and he didn't realize he was having it. Um, in the sky for that reading is the chariot, which uh, is bringing things on fast. And then um, the likely outcome is that this is the beginning of a new journey for our Prince Andrew. Then I said, was he guilty? Tell me cards, did he really do it? And the signifier for that was what? The lovers. I mean, could that be clearer? And then the challenge to that was the Nine of Swords, which is nightmares. And then the hopes and the fears of that would, of course, be the seven, uh, the Six of, of Swords, which is moving out of troubled waters. Yeah, he wants to move out of troubled waters. But then the likely outcome of the whole thing is his Five of Pentacles, which is being left out in the cold. And it might be at some point that the, um, the palace doesn't protect him anymore. Remember, his mom's on the way out and his brother's on the way in. And um, his brother was trying to reduce the, um, the weight of the royals on the monarchy in the public purse. So, you tell me. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.